hey, hey. Time for another Out of This World story from our space. I love happy endings. They are so rare. Today on our space, we learn why they are such a rarity. Our first OP discovers that we must find happiness in the endings we get. My cheating story. I hope I make this entertaining to read. I just want to help someone that might be going through being cheated on and to show them life can go on and will get better. To set the story up, I joined the Marine Corps in 2017 and had come home in 2018 for a big concert that happened every year in my area. Long story short, I made out with some girl in the crowd and got her number. We start texting and hang out the day before I fly back to California. Over the next year and a half, we build a bond and start dating. I know, probably shouldn't have dated someone I barely knew, but I was young and dumb. I end up coming home right before I go on a training deployment to Okinawa, a small Japanese island. We hung out the whole two weeks and have a great time with each other. Over the months, we keep talking and I think I'm in love and I'm pretty much head over heels for this girl. Some Marines will probably make fun of me because this is the average stereotype for Marines. They get stupid and start saying they love some girl they barely know. But she seemed extremely genuine and innocent as could possibly be. Looking back, there were obvious story flaws in things she would tell me about her ex and about how he was abusive and would force her to do things she didn't want to do. We'll get to that in a second during my deployment if you want to call it that. We continuously talk and call when we can, being that the hours are weird. During our time talking, there were things looking back on now that I realized were big red flags. But at the time, thought nothing of it being that I was very trusting. About three months before I come home, she starts saying things like she wants to erase social media because of how toxic it was and how much time it takes up in her day. No problem, it seemed completely understandable at the time. Then she says she's deleting Snapchat which I thought was odd as it's more of a communication app. During the next couple of months, she starts talking to me less and less to the point where it was usually to go a day without conversation. I would ask why this was and it would be the same excuse that she's just really busy with school and different things going on in her life. Eventually, the time comes for me to fly back to the States. I spend a couple days in California before getting to go back to my home state. She continues telling me how much she can't wait to see me and misses me. Keep in mind, she had visited my mom and dad's house several times while I was overseas. Well, I fly home and as soon as I turn my phone off airplane mode, she tells me she wants to break up. Um, what? Five hours ago, I was sitting in an airport waiting to board reading I can't wait and I love yous. Now we're breaking up after a year? So over the next two days, stories begin to surface that she has a new boyfriend and I'm pretty blindsided and angry, but need proof and to hear it from her. So I confront her and she denies everything. Eventually, she comes up with a story that her heart condition, I forgot to mention, she has a hole in her heart, may not allow her to have kids, and she knew I had always wanted my own kids. But I assured her that I loved her, and we'd adopt, and that I would do anything to make us work. Love isn't determined by DNA, and I've always been a firm believer in that. She says that she wants to give us a chance, and a few nights later, we have sex in her bed at her house. This is important later. The next night, I go out with friends and run into an ex of my buddies that happens to know my girlfriend's new man, that apparently didn't exist according to my girlfriend. Basically, she unravels everything and tells me exactly what's going on, with proof. I'm sad, I'm depressed. I wanted to hurt someone. All I really wanted was answers and to find out what happened. This is where it gets weird. My ex had never deleted any of her social media like she claimed. She had blocked me and all my close friends and family and basically started a new relationship and kept the game going with me for three months. Me and the friend of the guy that was my girlfriend's new man decided we were going to tell him everything so he knew he was getting lied to as well. He had no idea and I don't blame him for anything. I had confronted her over text and got no closure or answers. I told her to stay away from my friends and family and do not try to talk to me again and that I will make sure everyone knows about this and that her new man will also know about all the lies she's been telling both of us. She said that if I told anyone, she would get a restraining order against me. Like I didn't just tell her to stay away from me. One of her new man's friends tried to contact me basically saying that I was a lying abusive piece of crap and nobody believed me after she convinced them it wasn't true, including new man's. I have never laid my hand on another woman before and I was dumbfounded that all these things were being said about me. The first person I thought to contact was the abusive ex and come to find out, he told a very similar story to what happened to me. She had cheated on him multiple times and told stories about him being awful and abusive to other people just like she did to me. From there, I had nothing, no closure, no reasons, nothing to understand why this happened. So I did the wrong thing and whiskeyed my way over it for the next six months. 
I was always trashed when I wasn't at work. Eventually, I came to the conclusion that I did nothing wrong. She was just a batshit crazy witch and had a history of doing this to men. A year after all this, I met a cute little blonde lady at a bar and sat on the patio and talked to her all night till she left. She would go on to become my wife and she eventually introduced me to her two-year-old daughter. We got married and had a child last year, and I couldn't be more grateful for what this woman has done for me. She has given me a beautiful son and a beautiful stepdaughter that I treat like my own. Dad is barely in the picture. She makes me feel like I deserve love and that I can be who I am and always supports and encourages me. I'm truly with someone I'm prepared to die next to all the way to the end, and it's amazing. My point is I never had closure and I never had the answers I needed to cope. But life will go on, and if someone does this to you, then they truly aren't worth losing sleep over. Easier said than done, I know. But this is you right now. Just hang in there. I promise things will come around. It may be months. It may be years. But it won't always hurt this bad. I have not thought about my ex much till writing this post, and I feel zero sadness or emotion because I would do it all a hundred times again to gain this life I have now. The OP wanted to add, Sorry for the rambling, I'm not much of a writer and new to this, so I'll try to break it up into paragraphs in the future. And yes, I do have ADD. <laughs> to clarify, my wife and I began as friends. She was also in the Marine Corps at the time and had went through a divorce because her previous husband and he had put no effort into our relationship or being a father and had cheated on her multiple times. I've seen the proof. I've seen her ex-husband time and time again treat his daughter the same way my wife had described him treating her. We turned out to both be from the same state and we eventually moved home together and bought a house this year. My mother and father adore my wife and her daughter and started taking in her daughter as if she were their own grandchild, which she basically is now. So for anyone messaging me saying that my marriage now will end up the same way, I'm not sure how you gather that, but you must be sad individuals with no hope for the future. I think it's important for young men to go through this to realize that the first five years of your adult life are so insignificant to the rest of your life, and that it may seem like the end of the world and that you will never trust, but this will help you in the long run. You will be better at reading people and seeing the signs. Being cautious with your heart is important, but remember that you eventually need to let yourself love again. Love is a shot in the dark, and no matter how good a person's intentions might seem, you never really know. I understand that it is scary. But don't lose the best parts of yourself just because of someone that didn't give a dang about you. Someone will come along and treat you with dignity and respect. Breakups cause us pain, OP. They hurt. It's tempting to just try to push through the hurt and get to the other side. However, doing so is a mistake. We need to process those feelings in order to move forward in a healthy way. Our brains need resolution. We need to puzzle through the many things that happened in a relationship and how it ended up in a breakup. Of course, you might not ever know the exact objective reason why things didn't work out the way that you had hoped, but working through your thoughts and feelings allows you to come to a satisfying enough conclusion. That is closure. We don't always get closure outside of that. Sometimes we have to move on with questions still left unanswered, but it sounds like you made it out alive, OP. In fact, you might even feel more alive than you've ever felt before. I'm so happy you've been able to grow from these unfortunate circumstances. It sounds like you're in a really beautiful place in life. Way to go. Tell us some of your happy endings below. Our next OP's happy ending starts with a new beginning. My fiance cheated on me last year. I don't know what I'm looking for by sharing this. I'm just lonely, sad, and disappointed. And maybe I just need some reassurance that I shouldn't consider taking her back. I, male 27, been together with my fiance, female 24, since the end of 2019. In my mind, things were going great. I proposed last year on a mountain near a waterfall and she said yes. We talked about how the wedding would be, children, and all that. However, during our relationship, she became less interested in having sex, like from one or two times a day to one time a week or such. I hated that and tried to make things better. I was always careful with her and made her orgasm, always made sure I took care of her, and she rarely did it to me. I hated that, but I accepted it. I am guilty because I am not good looking and I am a boring person. I'm a web designer and I usually end up staying late working and she woke up way sooner than I did because she was going to college at the time. She finished in last summer. I mention this because that was one of her common complaints that I stayed up late and we didn't have the same schedule. I am guilty of that indeed and the fact that I haven't had many activities outside of the internet. She is kind of lonely also, doesn't have many friends and in my mind we were getting along great until this May when a few days prior to my birthday she told me she wants to break up. I was devastated. For a week she didn't say anything and then she texted me that we have to talk and maybe sort things out because she wants to get back with me. 
I forgot to mention that I moved with her last year after I proposed, around October. She told me that she was frustrated that I wasn't paying attention to her and I wasn't helping her enough with the chores. That is true and I was also frustrated of the fact that she was never in the mood. She said because she just didn't feel the need to do it. I guess it was a vicious cycle. We talked, got back together, and sort of moved back to her place. However, in this particular period of time, she, without wanting to, hinted that she was seeing someone during the week that we were separated. I pushed her and she confessed that she was going out with the guy but didn't do anything with him. I was mad, but oh little did I know, it was worse than I could ever imagine. We got over it and a few days ago, with the seed of doubt planted in my mind, she asked me to look for something in her purse and I found two packs of condoms, one opened with one missing. I confronted her and she told me that she doesn't remember, that she would never cheat on me, that they were old. However, the unopened pack was from 2020. I acted like I believed her, and maybe a part of me did. But yesterday, while clearing her desk, I moved her mouse and the screen of the laptop turned on. I want to mention that I have never, ever invaded the privacy of anyone. But given the last days, I needed answers. I read on her Facebook chats with a girlfriend of hers that indeed she wanted me back and she didn't do anything with him, even though she lied to me about how she met him. With a sigh of relief, I searched in the conversation with another girl she was close to last year, the word sex. I wanted to know what I was doing wrong or why she didn't like it, and oh boy did my world crash right there. The first result was from last year where my fiancé described how hot her athlete colleague was and how much she wants him. It was a graphical description. The others were describing how she went in a short skirt with him at a coffee shop, and then she went to his house and screwed him. That was during the month of April and May. I don't know how many times it happened. She said she was trembling and that he sent her a couple of pictures and she couldn't refuse him. At that point, my hands were shaking and I felt sick. Even more so, I went back and she was talking all with her about other guys she was talking to in March and she said she's considering getting Tinder. I confronted her yesterday and she couldn't believe I found out. For half an hour, she kept saying she didn't cheat on me until she started crying and got on her knees that it was a mistake and she loves me and she wants to marry me and have my children and all that. I got a part of my things I could carry in my car and left. So I don't know why I wrote this. I feel heartbroken and destroyed. I was really thinking I will marry this girl. She is conservative and shy, but I wasn't alpha enough to get to see her true self. I have to hit the gym, I guess. I still can't believe it happened, but yeah. She keeps texting me that she doesn't want to leave me and she would do anything to get me back. And I'm grossed out by the fact that her two girlfriends encouraged this behavior. Maybe because she was only telling them the bad things. A month after that was his birthday and we got together with them and their boyfriends. So I was probably in a room full of people knowing I got cheated on and I never had a clue at that time. Thank you for reading if you got this far and sorry for being chaotic in my writing. Our first reaction comes from new username same error. The best revenge is to live a great life. Every day your ex-fiance will be looking at the faithful woman's, the one you replaced her with, social media and realizing she was the one who threw away that opportunity herself. Enforcement X says, Well mate, she failed the fiancé test. She was never going to tell you and she likely would have continued cheating randomly behind your back. Just be glad you found out before you tied yourself to her financially or with children. You deserve better. She isn't good enough. Good luck, OP. Gah, this is really unfortunate. I wonder if circumstances would have been different if she would have told you the whole truth. Would you have stayed with her and tried to make it work even if she had told you exactly what had happened? I wish she had been honest with you, OP. It seems like she wasn't sure about leaving you or not, and then sleeping with someone else sort of answered that for her. The best revenge is, in fact, living a great life. I hope you are able to find peace and happiness. All the best, OP. What are your thoughts? Every fairy tale has a villain. Our last OP's wife is just that. Me cheating without knowing. I want to first say that I have been holding this in for about 15 years. I want to say that I don't believe in cheating. I worked construction and was staying in a motel room until I could find an apartment. It was a three-year project and the company rented a shop for me to work out of and the work we do, it was a great thing for me. I showed up for the project about two weeks after the other crews because I do maintenance and I had to finish up on another job. Well, when I got to the motel, they only had a suite left, so I took it. I showed up about 12 that night and the woman behind the counter was impressed that the company was paying for the suite for me and had heard from some of my coworkers that I would be coming there in days in advance. I have a good relationship with them all because I fix and weld their mistakes so nobody has to fill out reports. And I have a good time with my free time. 
Long story short, she started having venting conversations with me whenever she could and started calling my room whenever she had problems with guests at night. Well, she was wearing a wedding ring, so I just kept to listening to her problems and small talk. Well, I was working seven days a week and the crew that was staying at the hotel I was were going home for a four day weekend and were going to move to another motel that was closer to where they were working. We do transmission power lines, so they move as the lines progress. So I took the weekend off to do laundry and relax. So I get up at five Saturday morning like normal, so I'm going to do laundry. So I walked down to the laundry room and passed her doing the hotel laundry. After some small talk, I asked her if she wanted to make some money and do my clothes. She said yes, but didn't want any money, just wanted to have a couple beers at 7 a.m. and to just talk. She knew that a bunch of my coworkers left me all the beers that they had in their rooms, so I definitely had beer. Well, she came down and about four beers in, she told me that if I asked her out, she would. I told her I don't mess with married women. She said that she is going through a divorce and she works nights and her husband works days and they live their own lives, but they are together for the kids right now. Then she tells me that she has told her husband about me and he is good with it. Then she tells me that he is taking the kids to his parents' house for the weekend and she could stay. Well, I told her that it sounds good, but I don't want to get between her marriage problems. So she said I have to call him and tell him I'm just going to stay here tonight so he can just leave now. And she does call him so I can hear the conversation. I was shocked when she said she had a couple beers and was going to stay in my room tonight. I heard that and he didn't have a problem with it. I told her I was going to smoke a cigarette when she got the kids on the phone to tell them she loves them and see them Sunday or Monday morning. This was on speakerphone, so I just had to go smoke to get my head straight. If I would not have heard it, I would never believe it. So it was a little more talking about how she hadn't had sex in over a year and a half, and I believed her. She stayed till Monday afternoon, and I, of course, took Monday off. We finally did hit it off well. She would come to my room in the middle of the night and stay the weekend a couple more times before I got my apartment. The first week I was in my apartment, she would come over before work, but that weekend, she called me and said that her piece of junk van had finally died and asked if she could use my car to drive for a while. Well, that Saturday evening, her husband dropped her off at my place and wanted to talk to me. I went outside and he shook my hand and told me thanks for taking care of her and letting her use my car. She told him that she would be home Monday. I was still in amazement, but thought I was living large with a beautiful woman and had no problems from her soon to be ex-husband. This went on for a couple of years. I got to meet the kids and really got attached to them. So time comes that she has to move because their house is foreclosed on. I rented a house and moved the kids in with her and I. She started talking about marriage and I said I would, but their divorce had to be finalized first. So I paid for a lawyer to speed it up and then we got married. On my wedding night, I was told by her sister that I just met her family and didn't really approve of me cheating with her, but now that we are married, they would try and forgive me. After some time, her ex told me that he was told I was married already and was just a friend of his wife and didn't know that we were actually dating. We made it for nine years and I had to divorce her when I found out she was cheating on me when I was working out of town. Thanks for letting me get this out. Bob Barker Forever has the first community comment. Oof, so her first husband just thought she was platonically staying weekends with her male married friend? She clearly didn't let marriage get in the way of her single lifestyle. Sorry this happened to you. The OP replies, not really. They were having trouble and were on different schedules but he thought she was messing around with someone else that he knew. I still don't know why he didn't suspect me other than she told him I was just a good guy and my supposed wife knew that I was helping her. Banhammer40000 says, It's funny how the way they leave you is the same way you met them. This isn't your fault, OP. You were lied to. If you had known different, things wouldn't have gone down this road, you know? This was her MO though. Standard operating procedure. Freedom to venture out without having to put yourself out there because you have a safety net of a spouse. Cheaters are emotional cowards who are willing to betray the ones that love them. So lying through their teeth is not only in their wheelhouse, but a valuable tool in their arsenal of infidelity. The OP replies, yes sir, I don't have any respect for cheating because they don't have any respect for the people that they hurt. Ugh, I had honestly hoped this would be a happy ending of people who change their ways, but sadly it wasn't. I'm sorry she did this to you, OP. Some people never change. Did you ever think that she could do something like this to you? It sounds like she has some serious insecurities that only the path to self-discovery can heal. It's unfortunate that she let her own issues get in the way of your relationship. Thank you for joining us today on Our Space. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also, please let us know what you thought of today's content. Until next time.